Determining base strength may seem a little bit more difficult than determining acid strength. However, I'm going to show you the same easy ways of ranking strong and weak bases as I did in our Identifying Strong Acids video in our chemistry playlist to help you easily identify strong and weak bases. If you watch the Identifying Acids and Bases and Reactions video in our chemistry playlist, then you probably already know how to identify bases, but I'm going to go ahead and do a brief recap. Arrhenius bases are hydroxide donors, which simply means the basic compound will break a bond with the hydroxide and release it into solution, the hydroxide ion being the base. So a strong base is one that easily releases a hydroxide and doesn't reform a bond with it. Bronsted and Lari bases are proton acceptors, meaning they're negatively charged compounds that are able to form bonds with protons, in other words, acids. So a strong base is one that readily binds a proton and doesn't easily release it. Lewis bases are lone pair donors, meaning they're compounds that contribute their lone pair to a bond with the Lewis acid. So a strong base is one that readily contributes its lone pair to forming a bond with an acid. A Lewis base can also be a negatively charged compound, which simply means it has an extra lone pair to contribute to forming a bond with a Lewis acid. And in fact, a stronger base is one that has a negative charge rather than just a lone pair. For example, a negatively charged amine is stronger than ammonia. So now let's talk about how to easily identify strong bases. Electronegativity is one of the factors we can consider when ranking bases. When comparing bases that differ only by the electronegativity of the atom bonded to the hydroxide in the basic compound, the more electronegative that atom is, the more attractive it is to the hydroxide and therefore the stronger of a bond it forms with it making it less likely to break that bond and release the hydroxide as a base into solution. So among these bases, lithium has the highest electronegativity, sodium the second highest, and potassium has the lowest electronegativity. So in this case, potassium hydroxide is the strongest base due to potassium's lowest electronegativity, forming the weakest bond with the hydroxide, making it more likely to release the hydroxide as a base into solution, making it more basic. So a strong base is one where the hydroxide is attached to an atom with a low electronegativity. Atomic radius is an even easier way of determining base strength. Atomic radius increases as electronegativity decreases. So in our example before with lithium, sodium, and potassium, potassium had the lowest electronegativity, making it the largest atomic radius. This means when comparing potassium hydroxide to lithium hydroxide, potassium has a lower electronegativity and therefore a larger atomic radius, meaning it'll form a longer bond between it and the hydroxide making it a weaker bond and therefore more likely to break and release hydroxide into solution, making it more basic. So a strong base is one where the hydroxide is attached to an atom with a large atomic radius. A trick to rank hydroxide donating bases is to look at the atom attached to the hydroxide and the closer to the bottom left corner of the periodic table it is, the stronger of a base it will be. This means going down in a group and going left in a period. A trick to ranking lone pair donating bases is to look at the atom with the lone pair or negative charge and the closer to the top right corner of the periodic table it is, the stronger of a base it will be. This means going up in a group and going right in a period. Notice that the metals on the left side of the periodic table are not included here because they're more likely to be lone pair acceptors, making them Lewis acids. If electronegativity and atomic radius aren't apparent among basic compounds, then inductive effects is another factor we can look at to rank bases. Among these four basic compounds, the nitrogen in each of them has a lone pair and is therefore considered the basic atom. 
In the third compound, the nitrogen is attached to two carbon groups. Nitrogen is more electronegative than carbon and will have inductive effects with drawing carbon's electrons toward itself, making it more partially negative, which will make it more attractive to a positively charged hydrogen or an acid. Therefore, it will be more likely to form a bond with the hydrogen, meaning it will accept a proton, making it a pretty strong base. But in the fourth compound, the nitrogen is attached to three carbon groups, which means it'll have greater inductive effects because it can withdraw electrons from more carbons, making it more partially negative and therefore more attractive to a positively charged hydrogen and therefore more likely to accept the proton and form a bond with it, making it a stronger base and actually the strongest base here. In the second compound, the nitrogen only has one carbon attached to it. There will be inductive effects and nitrogen will withdraw electrons from carbon. However, it won't be as partially negatively charged as the third and fourth compounds. Therefore, it's less likely to form a bond with the positively charged hydrogen. And in the first compound, there are no carbons attached to it, which means way less inductive effects, not many electrons to withdraw toward itself, and therefore not very negatively charged, and the least likely to form a bond with a positively charged hydrogen, making it the weakest base. Now let's consider a potentially basic compound that has an atom that is more electronegative than the basic atom. And in this case, the basic atom is nitrogen. The more electronegative atom, chlorine, will withdraw electrons toward itself, which will cause an electron withdrawing effect away from the nitrogen, making the nitrogen partially positive, which is not very attractive toward a positively charged hydrogen, therefore making it less likely to form a bond with the hydrogen, meaning less likely to accept a proton, therefore less basic. So a strong base is one that has electron donating effects toward the basic atom, meaning the basic atom is attached to less electronegative atoms. A trick to help bring bases when having to consider inductive effects is to identify the basic atom in each compound. And in each of these, it's oxygen, and then determine whether it's attached to electron withdrawing groups or electron donating groups. And in this case, each compound is attached to carbon. Carbon is less electronegative than the oxygen, so they're each attached to only electron donating groups. So then draw arrows from the electron donating groups toward the basic atom. The compound with more arrows pointing toward the basic atom is the more basic compound. In this case, the compound on the right is the stronger base. Let's try it with these two examples. Again, we start by identifying the basic atom in each compound, and it's usually nitrogen in organic compounds, and then we determine whether it's attached to electron donating groups or electron withdrawing groups. And the compound on the right is attached to an oxygen, which is an electron withdrawing group. Then we draw arrows from the electron donating groups toward the basic atom. And remember, if we have an electron withdrawing group, we draw arrows toward the electron withdrawing group away from the basic atom. And just like in the previous example, the compound that has more arrows pointing toward the basic atom will be the stronger base. Resonance stability is a final factor to consider when determining base strength. Resonance stabilized bases experience mobility of pi electrons, which means the movement of lone pairs and double bonded electrons, meaning the negative charge where hydrogen would usually attach is never in one place. At one moment, the oxygen can be negatively charged and a hydrogen can approach, but in the very next moment, the negative charge can become a double bond and then the hydrogen can't bind. This is what stabilizes the base and prevents it from accepting a proton, which makes it a weak base. So if a weak base is resonance stabilized, then a strong base is one that is not resonance stabilized. Strong bases have weak conjugate acids. With the rainiest bases, 
This means that if the basic compound releases hydroxide ion into solution, and if the conjugate acid cannot rebind to the hydroxide ion, it's a weak conjugate acid, meaning the calcium hydroxide is a strong base, leaving hydroxide in solution, creating a basic environment. With Bronsted, Lowry, and Lewis bases, this means when the base accepts a proton and forms a bond with the hydrogen, if the conjugate acid does not break the bond, releasing the positively charged hydrogen back into solution, it's a weak conjugate acid, making the sulfide ion a strong base. Essentially, the base uptakes acid from solution, making the solution more basic. To help identify weak conjugate acids, look for low electronegativity, large atomic radii, and the lack of electron donating inductive effects. Low electronegativity and large atomic radius, like in the potassium ion on the bottom, makes the conjugate acid less attractive to hydroxide ions and therefore less likely to bind to hydroxide ions, leaving them in solution and creating a more basic solution like seen in the beaker on the bottom. As we saw before, when a base has electron donating groups from which it can withdraw electrons, the basic atom becomes more partially negative, making it more likely and more easily able to accept a proton and maintain the bond with the proton, making it a strong base, but a weak conjugate acid because it will not release the proton. When there are less or a lack of electron donating groups, or even when there's electron withdrawing groups, electrons will be withdrawn from the basic atom, making it partially positively charged, and therefore less likely to accept a proton or maintain a bond with a proton, which makes this a weak base, but a strong conjugate acid, because a strong acid releases protons into solution. And finally, if values are given, Kb and pKb, know that a high Kb means a strong base. A Kb is just a number that indicates the ability of a base to act as a base to its saturation or equilibrium point. The higher the Kb, the stronger the base. A high Kb mathematically equates to a low pKb. So a low pKb means strong base. So high Kb equals low pKb equals strong base. Simple as that. I hope this video helps you identify strong bases or rank them based on strength. Thank you for watching.